May 1, 2018, Voss records the story of Jessica Powell, who suffered a fall, hitting her head on a table and cutting her ear. She went to the emergency room at Hoboken University Medical Center in New York, where she was given an ice pack. She received no treatment, no diagnosis, and never spoke with a physician. But a few weeks later, a bill arrived in the mail for $5,751. Sadly, Jessica's experience is not isolated or unique. In July of 2018, Fox reported the emergency room database, spanning the years of 2012 through 2017, amassed more than 1,300 patients, being charged in excess of $5,000 for simply entering the emergency room. We're talking about patients that never made it past the waiting room. They did not receive treatment. Most of us are aware that our lives can be irreparably changed due to a medical illness and its treatment, but most of us don't think the mere act of walking through the door as having the same effect. As a result, it is imperative that we examine the impacts of so many Americans being overcharged in emergency rooms assess why the situation is growing worse before treating this disease with a variety of remedies to cure what the Sacramento Bee in April of 2018 called an unconscionable problem being foisted upon those who can least afford it. Victims of such fraud are found in every state in our union, with the only common denominator not being that they sought treatment, but that they did not receive treatment, and despite the lack of treatment, received a bill to the tunes of tens of thousands of dollars. To fully grasp the scope of emergency room overcharging, we must examine first how geography is a factor, and second how race plays a role. Whether late at night or on holiday, going to the ER may be the only choice, due to limited options in many rural communities. October 17, 2017 Science Daily reported that nearly 50% of all annual health care treatment is sought via the emergency room. With 130 million visits occurring annually, that's a significant proportion of our population unknowingly setting themselves up to be overcharged. The 2017 report titled, Disparities in Emergency and Urgent Care Services in Urban and Rural Communities, explained that 20% of Americans live in rural communities. And for 30% of that community, the closest medical provider is an emergency room. Further compounding the problem is an increasing number of patients being forced to seek treatment in ERs are members of minority groups. African Americans use the ER 54% of the time, while Hispanics were 51. In a Healthline article from June 14, 2017, Dr. Martha McCary argues that hospitals with higher proportion of uninsured African American and Hispanic patients tend to charge higher markups. Dr. Martin McCary of the University of Maryland Medical Center argues that geographic isolation, as well as socioeconomic and racial inequality, not only create barriers to accessing health care, but means that if and when these individuals seek treatment, they are unwittingly representing the group that will suffer the bulk of the overcharge. In addition to these findings, the Institute of Medicine concluded that over the last two years, 30% of American health spending had been wasteful, due entirely from overcharges. With such a vast problem affecting millions of Americans, we must assess why overcharges persist. The primary causes are threefold, evolving around facility fees, networking, and transparency. In March of 2015, the Well Care Urgent Care Center published an article arguing hospitals charging such large amounts are due to facility fees. Unlike most businesses that can release staff members or shut down facilities if not needed, hospitals must keep staff and facility functional 24-7. The Alliance website, last updated September 20th, 2018, explained that facility fees are charged to cover the overall cost of maintaining that facility. Meaning, most of the time, you are paying for services that were never rendered. The second prominent cause is the tricky in-network, out-of-network business all patients must face prior treatment. According to Blue Cross Blue Shield, in-network means the doctor or hospital will accept your insurance plan. Out of network means they will not. In July of 2018, Vox shows that out of network charges can be up to 340% more than in-network. Just because the hospital is a network does not mean the doctor treating you is. 
In 2017, the New York Times reported that nationwide, one in five visits to an in-network emergency room results in an out-of-network doctor bill. The lack of transparency is another reason overcharging persists. According to Henry J. Kaiser Family Foundation, if Americans want to ask questions about billing, they better understand they're in a long line. With phone calls lasting close to one hour and with only a fraction of cases being rectified, many patients simply give up, unable to navigate through the bureaucracy and red tape. The 2017 Journal of Health and Medical Economics reported that out of all the individual cases of people being overcharged, a full two thirds took no action to reduce or solve their claim, never filing for an appeal or a complaint. Further allowing overzealous billing is the fact that many consumers feel as though there's some sort of oversight or regulatory activity being implemented on their behalf. And while some states have made efforts to address this issue through hospital fair pricing laws, 4th of July 5th, 2017, shows that 45 states still receive an F in implementation, with 23 not even proposing such legislation. It is this limited approach that is allowing millions to continue to be fleeced. Professor Christopher Garman of the University of Missouri argued on May 23rd of 2018, we need a federal solution. Right now, it's just a patchwork where some states have protection and others don't. So aside from avoiding the ER, what can be done to remedy this most serious affliction? Fortunately, solutions exist at a personal, institutional, and federal level. A small part of the solution must be borne by the consumer. As we know, if we aren't looking out for ourselves, who will? Meaning, we need to be vigilant. Most major insurance providers now offer apps and websites with easy to access lists of hospitals in our network. When we receive our medical bills, we need to ask for itemized breakdown of our charges and scrutinize them, knowing they can be questioned, challenged, and changed. Both online healthcare blueprint and fair health guides, which I provide for you on this card, now, now give details on how to succeed in the negotiation process. But the burden of this issue must not be borne solely by the consumer. Institutions must be made to alter their practices. And fortunately, Blueprint is already in existence. In 2017, the Plain Dealer reported that the Obama administration has already made an effort in reducing facility fees through the Bipartisan Budget Act of 2015. Yet, despite their good intention, the legislation only applies to hospitals built in the future or since that time. But a broader solution exists in the form of Nikki Songus, a congresswoman from Massachusetts who is forwarding a bipartisan proposal to impose federal limitations and to limit and to require bundling contracts, which would force medical providers and institutions to be linked together in the same network. Zach Cooper, an assistant professor of health and medical economics at Yale University, believes this proposal is a good idea of, of avoiding consumer surprise, of discovering while the hospital in that was in network, the doctor treating you was not, resulting in excessive overcharge. Representative Songus is openly soliciting input for her bipartisan proposal, yet is receiving only a limited amount. A simple Google or Facebook search will allow you to give your opinions regarding her proposal. Without input, such legislation will languish and die. The problem isn't being addressed because Congress doesn't think we care. When Rod Bloom, a representative from Iowa says he won't bring the legislation to the floor for discussion or vote, it is time we have our voices heard. We can no longer live in a state of denial, assuming these exorbitant charges won't happen to us. Because your time is coming, you will seek medical care and find that your quality of life may be forever impacted by an excessive charge. Act now. Today, we have discussed the problem of overcharging in America, a problem uniquely impacted by racial and geographic disparities. We have examined the causes, discovering facility fees and limiting networking and a lack of transparency, but have also found options that exist to provide a lasting remedy, giving Americans the healthcare they deserve at a cost they can afford and manage. 
Jessica Kell, and many others are working to pay off bills of thousands of dollars for Tylenol and Band-Aids and are making progress in overcoming those bills. And we can do the same to ensure that anyone can walk safely through an emergency room door without the horror of an overpriced bill hanging over their heads.